can do it with my <laughs> friends, but not with my wife. Um, basically, Safety First uh, decided to do this venture about a year ago to get into homes, to sort of get the, the idea of childproofing out there, so the, the awareness out there. Um, we have a, a company in, in California that we use as our business model, and I'm the first person here in Connecticut, actually in the country, to, to start one of these. We have one now in, in New Jersey, so we're expanding out from there. We're company owned. A um, little background on safety first, it's owned by Durrell Juvenile Group, which owns Maxi Cozy and Quinny and all the, the safety products that are under their umbrella. So it's a really great family-oriented company. Um, what we do is we basically come out to your home and uh, we would do a uh, child proofing consultation. We'd like to do it, we, we try to tell moms to, to try to take care of it before the baby's born because it gets a little hectic after. So we try to think about getting ahead of the curve and doing it while you're pregnant. Obviously that can't always be done, so we, we do it anytime that's good for you. And we, we believe in a powerful one-two combination of child proofing and discipline. Um, vigilance and discipline is just as important as us doing the work in the house. It's mom and dad using the same verbiage when, when the child's in a dangerous situation. No, no, not for babies, be careful. You know, sort of backing up the child proofing with the vigilance and the discipline is the most important thing. Um, because 90% of these uh, these childhood injuries can be avoided. These, these accidents and the trips to the emergency room can be avoided with a simple child proofing. So we believe that's, that's pretty important. Um, we also believe that once you do have, have the child proofing done, that it's uh, children are, are sponges. They're made to learn. So even at this age, they're watching you at every move and everything that you're doing. So we sort of try to caution you to be careful while you're undoing the childproofing, that as they're watching, they're going to learn that and it's going to come to them quicker to be able to get past the childproofing if they're watching you. So we recommend that you turn your back to them or sort of distract them while you're unlatching or while you're taking a gate, moving the gate, things like that. Sort of, it makes the it makes the childproofing last longer, you know, to into their twos and threes rather than into their ones or twos. So we, we, we believe that's a good idea. Also, we believe in off-limits rooms, offices. Uh, older children's rooms, uh, guest bedrooms, laundry rooms, loft terraces, gyms, very important gyms these days. You hear all the stories about how children get hurt with, with um, tre treadmills and the little loop that's created by that little card key that's not, doesn't get pulled out by a child's weight, would get pulled out by our weight, but not with a child's weight, so that creates a little bit of strangulation. So we believe those rooms should be off limits. There's a very simple fix, and I brought some products just to talk about as we go along. Um, a top door lock goes on, on the top of your door. There's a little pin that's inserted on the outside of the door. So this is movable from either inside or outside of the, of the door. But once this is in place at the top of the door, the child can't get in that room. So that office, that gym, you know, offices too with the cords that come down in loop and are just you know there for a child right in the same area, the same height of the child's neck. These things keep that sort of off limits for the, for the and it's a very simple fix. It makes one little hole in, the, in your, in the molding that goes around your door on the outside of the door in the hallway area. This slides over that loop and now creates a lot of door. So little things like that we think are, are important um, products. No unsupervised entry into bathrooms. The bathrooms are very in pro proportion to their body. The child's head right now at this point is so much heavier than the rest of the body. If they ever did get into the toilet or a water area, there's no way for them to get out. So we recommend bathrooms, top door lock, and then toilet locks, sort of layers of protection in those situations. So the door is locked, but if the door is left unlocked by a young older sibling or by a someone who just forgot to lock the door, you have a toilet lock in place, you have magnetic locks on the cabinets, so those things are secondary protections, um, so those accidents don't happen. Uh, there are common hazards in every home. Electrical outlets are a major hazard. The, the round outlet plugs that we've all used for years are now considered choking hazards, and they whatever whatever can fit into a round um, toilet paper roll, the, 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 the uh, the cardboard toilet paper roll, if it fits in there, it's now considered a choking hazard. So those round outlet plugs are now considered ha uh, hazards. They do make elongated ones that now are wider than that, so they won't go into the child's throat, so you can use those. We recommend um, just changing the outlet covers to a slide cover. So once these are in place, you plug, you move it over to plug your appliance in, and as soon as you're done, and you pull it out, it snaps back, so there's no chance of anything being put inside of these anymore. And you don't forget to put that thing back in. Right. They're left on the floor. <clears throat> you know, you're pulled right. out the vacuum or someone uses it, it's left on the floor. It's a choking hazard and then the electrical hazard is still there. So this takes away both of those. A lot of these, most of these products are not safety first products. It's something that we try to make everybody aware of. We use professional grade. Now, safety first or Dorel makes more consumer brand products. So they fit from, in most houses, they don't fit in all houses. What a professional child will do, get something specific for your home that works exactly for your home. And these are some products that we're doing. Uh, 
power strip covers on power strips. You know, if those if you have five or six outlets plugged into one, it's 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 inviting. It's right on their level. They crawl right over to it. They pull it out a little bit, and the outlet can be exposed and can be electrical hazard. There's a cover now that goes over those power strips that sort of secures everything. They're, they're just slide apart. You can move the outlets if you want to, but it, when it's together, it, it works really well. Um, cord control kits, you know, the offices, we like to keep them off limits, but if child's are in, children are in there when you're working during the day, a lot of moms work from home now, so you may have the child in there. They're, all those cords can be put into one plastic sleeve and then run properly so it's not, there's not a gigantic loop created and all the, uh, all the wires aren't separate for them to play with individually. Tipping uh, for furniture is a big problem now, not just furniture, but uh, flat screen TVs are all made now very top heavy on very narrow bases when they're set on top of furniture. They, they, they should be mounted to the wall. In, in California, there have been four or five deaths by children with the weight of the TV you coming down. Got one and my husband has an anchor to the wall. Right. Not even if I bump into it, it's right. yeah. Absolutely. And the plasma TVs are made to be adjustable, or even the LCD TVs are made to be adjustable. The professional mounts don't just mount it to the wall, but give you that six or eight inches of play so you can watch the TV view it from different places as well. Another professional grade. Not all TV mounts. The TV mounts that they give you with the TV are just going to be they're going to be static. They're not going to move for you. So they're, they're not going to give you that play. Professional grade ones will give you the play. So it makes it more convenient and safe at the same time. Um, anchoring tall, furniture, tall and narrow furniture, bookcases, um, hutches. Once that bottom drawer, children like to pull the bottom drawers out and create stairs to climb up. Once that bottom, bottom drawer comes out, it can create a pull from it. <laughs> can actually tip the furniture, or if it doesn't tip the furniture, usually the glass frame picture frames or dishes up there, now you have a falling piece of glass as a hazard also. So we recommend that those, those pieces of furniture be tethered. If they're hutches, they're two separate pieces, we recommend both pieces being tethered, the bottom and the top. Um, high bookcases, narrow, we, we recommend, you know, they're just being screwed into the stud in the wall and then a strap put on from the furniture to the wall, just to keep it safe. Not all furniture needs that done if it's if it's got a, a wide base and it's a shorter piece of furniture, most likely it won't need to be done, but that's what we can do when come in. We come in and do about an hour-long presentation in your home. We can go through each room and we'll recommend what we see as, uh, as what are hazards or what are hazards. Falls are a big hazard in homes. We recommend that second floor windows um, have an external lock on them or, or a uh, guard. Guards are more <coughs> difficult because some of them are made to open, some of them aren't made to, to open. In Connecticut, second floor windows have to, by code, if they have a latch or, or a guard on it, they have to be able to be opened by the fire department or someone in an emergency situation. Not all guards will do that, um, so window locks work for that. There's some very simple window locks that can work with double hung windows. They're called um, window windows. There's just basically a strip of Velcro that's put on your window. This is put on the Velcro, and as that window is lifted, it wedges itself here and can't move. Once that Velcro grabs and the window's there, this thing can't move. If we can give you two or three inches of ventilation, if it's a beautiful day like today, you can have ventilation in your home, but there's no chance that the child will, that your child will push the screen out and fall out of that window. So windows are very important. Screens are not the safety. They're, they're in there very lightly. They're in there just for the bugs. A, a simple push can push the screens out. So we recommend the windows never be open more than two or three inches. Anything over that, the child can get their head stuck in. And if they do, their, their tendency is, is they can't pull back, they'll be able to push themselves out and then go through the screen and fall out. So that's something that we think is very important. Toy stacking near windows is an important issue on the second floor also. Children like to be able to see outside that window. At this point, they're probably not tall enough to see without stacking up toys. So any kind of little benches or toy boxes should be kept away from the walls where the windows are, sort of an area where there's no windows just so they don't keep that toy stacking. And if you see them continually doing that, that's where the vigilance and discipline comes in, is to remind them that no, no, that's dangerous and bring it to a separate area.